I'm so tired. I haven't had any ideas for videos. And what do I do when I run into any sort of creative wall? Simple. I chill out. I relax. And then I cover something in any kind of video that won't piss me off or mentally strain me in any way. So yes, today everybody, we're gonna be going much more mellow than usual. Because I am so relaxed. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I'm so composed, Mozart's ghost is jealous. I'm more placid than the lake. I'm smoother than a ceramic mug or a bathtub with a little bit of lard in it. I'm so chill, you can fill me right up with milk and lettuce. And so with that, let us dive into the world of PlayStation cheats. Lettuce. Greetings and salutations my beautiful people and welcome to the Kadekura Show, where I always have to do the dirty deed of deciding whether or not a game deserves to be slaughtered or salvaged. But today, nothing is going to be shot, so don't worry. <laughs> oh shit! And instead we're going to be paying homage to the time of video game cheat codes. From level skips to big head mode, cheat codes were fucking awesome back in the day. And they're still around, yes, but they're not as good as they used to be, honestly. They added this huge amount of replayability and experimentation to any of your favourite games that you'd finished over and over and over again. And it was really fun discovering some of the ridiculous shit that the developers put into games that you could pull off. I was going to make this a top 10 video, but then I felt much more comfortable doing a back-to-back -back memories video of sorts. And since the PS1 is my favourite console ever, I figured it would be very cool to just go back to the system, play as many games as I could, and input as many cheats that I remember playing through and messing around with. Please know that I can't cover every single game in my PlayStation collection, otherwise we will be here all week. And, of course, there will be some games I don't own a box copy of or haven't played or whatever, so if some of your favourite PlayStation cheats do not appear in this video, I apologise in advance, but hey, that's what the comments are for, right? Also, for authenticity and to stop this video going on for hours and hours, I'm only going to be covering cheats that are found in this baby. Ah yes, there was a time where helplines and cheat books were the only way for people who wanted cheats to get them, back before the internet was easily available to everybody. I mean, I was born in 1994, so luckily by the time I was old enough to understand computers, the internet was getting faster, better and cheaper, so I could access cheats whenever I wanted to, but still, for the time up until I was old enough to jump onto AOL and hear those gorgeous resonant harmonies, This book became my best friend for playing the secret Crash Bandicoot and Spyro demos between the two series, or fucking around with every single inventory item on the original Tomb Raider. Also, Buzz Lightyear, he isn't anywhere in this book. What the fuck? Not one Disney PS1 game that Buzz appears in is in this book. Just trying to get me to waste my pocket money on PlayStation Planet magazine, eh? Trying to attract my childhood self's eye and make me buy your magazine because I love the Toy Story games, eh? Lying to me because you were desperate to sell a copy of your magazine because it was going out of business and nowadays I can't find any scrap of information on the internet about you, eh? And hey, remember when cheats cost real life money? Ha 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 ha! Anyways, let's start this party off the right way. The first ever cheat I implemented into a video game. Gex 3. This wasn't anything too crazy since I'd already beaten the whole game and beat all of the secret TVs in the caves. And after doing that, a new area was unlocked called The Vault. And in there you could input a variety of codes for a variety of things. Out of invincibility and the like, the cheats I was really interested in were playing as other random characters. Yes, in the times before DLC, you could just type in a code and play as any other random characters in a game. And maybe go a little bit meta, because I'm the butler right now, but my butler has not actually changed, so is the game telling me that no matter what I do to cheat, my hardships and service to the world of gaming will spiral for all time and never end? And the fact that I'm now playing as the butler might mean that, yes, I may think that I'm being served on hand and foot in the universe of the game, but I'm actually still under the slave influence of the game itself. I am the butler. I am the one providing my services to the game. I've got to beat it. Otherwise, I will get nothing. I have to do all the work. Or maybe it's not any of that.
Maybe it's just fucking funny. Now these I like to call secret character cheats. Granted in Gex 3 it's literally just a skin swap, but how about Formula 1? You could play as a bloody bike in that game and a buggy in the middle of lava. There's something very funny about this. I'm not sure what it is though. How about Wipeout 2097, which allows you to play as other random insects and animals? Look, it's adorable. Look at them all. Maybe except the gaping pig anus, I could do without that. Ah well, if anyone ever patronizes you in life with the whole, oh sure, when pigs fly bullshit, just show them this. This is a flying pig. Just ignore the anus. Oh, and what about the game I talked about in the last Kid Icarus episode? In Nightmare Creatures, you could play as one of the fucking monsters. And this isn't just a skin swap, this is an entirely new character with its own animations, combos, and special moves. I find it so awesome how the devs went out of their way to just add in a new playable character in complete secret that could only be unlocked with a code. <laughs> Take lessons from this AAA market. I'm not gonna be paying £1.69 for a jacket when I can play as a flying mutant fighting other mutants for free. Insert evolve joke somewhere in here. I don't know. Speaking of nightmare creatures, this leads me on to what I like to call UNSTOPPABLE CHEATS. These cheats are fucking great. In nightmare creatures to start with, you can input a cheat that gives you a razor weapon. Forever. What does that mean? Well, let me just show you. If you couldn't tell by now, unstoppable cheats are literally just cheats that make you unstoppable. Nothing more to say. In games like Bugs Bunny Lost in Time, you can get yourself full carrots, full level access, full abilities, and even the ability to watch both endings of the game without doing a single thing. My core is the hardest. My core is also the hardest in all of the Tomb Raider games. Yes, all of them. Because you can access every damn weapon straight off the bat and slaughter everything whenever you want with as much ammo as you please. It's so much damn fun. Look at me go. I'm good at video Now with Time Crisis, I tried to get this no reload code to work, but I think the cheat doesn't work on the PAL version of the game. Thanks very much, you stupid book that's made for the PAL regions. What, did, did, no, did, no, did nobody test these? So to aid in my depression and disappointment, let's go back to Wipeout 2097 quickly and go batshit insane. Use the pause codes, equip infinite energy in the machine gun, and bring the pain. The machine gun does affect your driving slightly, but that's a small sacrifice to make when you can pretty much win any race by killing everybody and feeling great whenever you hear. <laughs> In Medieval, you can pretty much input a god code that allows you to do anything you want with any weapon. It's doomsday for the graveyard tonight, and it's also a shame that Sir Dan was more of a badass dead than when he had skin. I mean, who actually wants to go through the strenuous process of killing enough enemies in a stage and then finding the hidden chalice which then takes you to the Hall of Heroes at the end of the stage to allow you to talk to a statue to then get a secret weapon? Idiots. That's who. But who wants to hammer zombies back into the ground where they came from in the beginning of the game? Non-idiots. That's who. Anyway, let's get real now. Alien Trilogy. With the self-proclaimed super cheat, you can get all weapons, unlimited firepower, invincibility, and access to every level. <laughs> God damn. This is great. Granted, it takes all the fear out of the game straight from the get-go, but come on, who doesn't want to feel like a proper Colonial Marine with unlimited everything? I mean, it's awesome that this game is better than Colonial Marines as it is, but then all of this cheating shit is just the icing on the cake. No amount of expansions or DLC could add anything to Colonial Marines, and yet secret codes from a game nearly 20 years ago shits all over it. Siphon Filter. That's not an easy game, for sure. Until you enter all weapons and unlimited ammo mode. Or, even better and much funnier, use the one-hit kill cheat. Bang. Tee -hee. Bang. Tee -hee. Bang. Although my all-time favorite game to do this super cheap business with is Die Hard Trilogy. With Die Hard 2 and 3, you get a lot of the same predictable stuff like invincibility and infinite ammo and no time limit, but with the first game, it's easily the most flexible and hilarious. We'll be covering a load more cheats with this game later on in the video, but for now, let's keep it real with 50 grenades, unlimited ammo, and invincibility. The one thing that the terrorists never expected to see when they arrived to the Nakatomi Plaza that day were the painting and decorating department hired to refurbish the offices. And they were all to be painted red. Boom! 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 <laughs> be careful with the hostages, though. I mean, they do seem pretty confident once you rescued them when they stride away with that much swag, but you can still do this to them. It's easy to get carried away. It's also no shock by this point that I can't stand the fifth element. But hey, maybe with infinite shields and all weapons, I could at least have a little bit of fun. Okay, no, the game still fucking sucks. But it is a little bit of fun. Well, well, this is fun, and um, this is fun. 
But that, that that's all I can say. And who can forget Jackie Chan's stunt master, where you have a cheat that gets you loads of lives. <laughs> you. By the way, guys, do any of you remember the games that actually allowed you to try out other games within those games? Those are the games that have what I like to call demo cheats. And to be fair, the only games I own that have these secret codes are the Spyro and Crash games, but still, it's fucking cool. In a world where people on Steam ask for upwards of full retail price for a game that only has one level in it because it's early access, back in the PS1 days, Insomniac and Naughty Dog were hiding demos of their platforming rivals in their games. Maybe they weren't rivals after all, eh? It wasn't exactly free promotion since you needed the secret code to access them, but still, how awesome is that? After playing through Spyro 3 and then Spyro 2, I was kind of waiting for my next birthday to ask for the first Spyro, so in the meantime, this is actually how I managed to try Spyro 1 for the first time, because it was actually a secret demo in Crash 3. Please let me know guys, I'm very curious, did any other games hide other companies' demos in their games? Please comment and let me know, because this is all I could find in my cheat book anyway. But alas, along with some useful and some very fucking fun cheats, let's not hide the fact that this is still what they are. Cheats. And because of that, there were cheats for those people that just couldn't be fucked with actually trying to pass a part of the game, or, you know, you were a kid that wanted to see the rest of a game that you found too difficult. And these are what I like to call Cheating Cheats. I couldn't think of a better name. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I personally don't condone these kinds of cheats for games nowadays, because, I mean, good God, if you can't beat a part of the game, play it more and improve, unless a game is completely broken and impossible to pass, in which case, why the fuck would you want to still keep playing? I feel like skipping parts of a game is kind of counterintuitive to what the point of playing a game actually is in the first place. But still, despite that, these cheats were still here for sure, and sometimes they could be very helpful, especially in racing and party games. Don't want to spend hours upon hours in single-player adventure modes to unlock more stuff for the multiplayer, which is the main reason you got the game in the first place? That's understandable, honestly. Well then, Crash Bash, Crash Team Racing, and Muppet Race Mania have you covered by allowing you to unlock everything with secret codes. Handy. What I do like, though, is that these kinds of cheaters cheats are still secret, you know, needing secret commands and such as. But then there are the really uninteresting ones like Croc, G-Police, Hercules, Nightmare Creatures Again, and Roll Cage, which all have a dedicated password screen because a fair few people didn't own the additional and expensive memory cards, and CD technology wasn't great for storing any more data than what was already there, as opposed to the battery backups in cartridges. And yeah, if you ask me, those kinds of passwords are just fucking boring. I mean, for God's sake, if the game actually gives you a password that you can use on any version of the game for the last stage, you're kind of asking to be cheated on. Nah, I prefer the ones that are totally secret and make you feel like a god for doing them. Uh, you know, after looking them up in the book. Oddworld Abe's Odyssey and Abe's Exodus, the Tomb Raider series, Heart of Darkness, Tarzan, Spyro 1, they all had secret codes that allowed you access to level skips and level selectors, maybe in a debug menu or something. Now, Crash Bandicoot 1 uses a password screen, but the thing that doesn't make it boring is the fact that you find the secret code in the book and then think, oh, oh great. great! And then with this newly acquired information, you go to the password screen in the game and see that it's nowhere near long enough for that code you just found, so then you're like, oh, oh fuck. fuck! Now, at that point, most people would just go back and actually start the game from the beginning, but ah, when you actually start entering the code, look! It extends! I think that that little touch alone makes this password screen one of the best. I mean, it's like a hidden password screen within a password screen. It's so cool. But what's even better than that is the only way to save the game in Crash Bandicoot 1 is by grabbing a gem or beating a bonus level, meaning that if you input this code, you've done everything. Which also means you can't save a 100% completed file on a memory card and then pretend to show off to your friends and say that you have beaten it all by yourself. Another bit of game frustration. In my eye. I think Naughty Dog deliberately programmed it this way to say a hearty fuck you to everyone that wanted to cheat this badly. And I especially like the cheats like in Cool Borders 3, where you type in the code as a player name. And what's better than that? Well, being called a dirty, skanky cheater in the process to make you feel even worse about yourself. Cheater? I mean, if you get the cheat, I suppose they have the right to shame you. And what better way to shame you other than that than with the other type of cheat that I like to call Useless Cheats. Let's start with Gex 2, where you can access a nifty cheat menu, but among all of these cheats, you can input one that allows Gex to talk on command. Hello. <laughs> the only thing more confusing is trying to find shoelaces at Woolies. Feels so good on my bald lizard head. Luckily, in the PAL version of the game, Gex is voiced by the legend that is Leslie Phillips, and all the dated references never get old because of that. It's just, you can't get enough of his deeply amazing, sexy voice. Either way, I still think it's odd how there's a speech button in the first place, you know, just in case you think that the character that never shuts up in the game needs a dedicated button command to say even more things because Gex just didn't talk enough. And hey, how would you like to play everybody's golf? Yeah, that game is so much fun. What cheats are there that we can play with? Well, one that changes your golfing stance. Why is this a fucking cheat? How about a cheat in Destruction Derby 2 that gives you animated credits? Now I actually want to watch the credits. 
because they're fun now. Definitely though, the king of useless cheats in PlayStation history is in Tomb Raider 2. After a series of really strange in-game commands, you'll bear witness to... Uh, this. <laughs> You know something, going back through this nostalgic classic book again, there were a load of games in here that didn't actually offer any cheats whatsoever. I mean, sure, there were handy hints here and there, but some of the games listed in this book I'd see in the corner of my eye when I was younger, and then I'd get really excited to see what potential cheats there were for the game, only to then see... To unlock this thing, you must beat the game. Well, no fucking shit. Thanks for the cheat. I'm sure I would have noticed the unlock when I beat the game anyway, so thanks for spoiling the surprise, you... 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 Yes, these cheats were what I like to call walkthrough cheats. Again, I do believe that using walkthroughs for your first playthrough of any game massively spoils the entire experience as far as I'm concerned. I mean, they're great for figuring out secrets and letting you explore more of the game that you might have missed in a second playthrough, but for your first? Nah, I don't like doing that. Especially for things like horror games. I mean, where's the fun when you know exactly what the fuck is gonna happen and at the exact points? I don't know. I don't know why you'd want to do that to yourself. Either way, though, this book features many random walkthrough hints and methods to unlock certain things in games, like Buster Move 2, Chicken Run, Driver 2, Gran Turismo 1 and 2, The Grinch, Metal Gear Solid, Resident Evil, Ridge Racer 1 and Revolution, Spyro 2, and even Parappa the Rapper. Where in the book, it gives you specific rhythms to input in each stage that can give you an easy call rating on every level and help you ace the entire game. Now that is pretty cool. It's like rhythmic cheats and not just button input cheats. I mean, it's so cool. Ah, fantastic. Now I just need to use my immense skills to help keep that call rating up until the end. Even Tekken 3 of all games has walkthrough cheats. How do I unlock Kuma? Beat arcade mode once. Okay. How do I unlock Julia? Beat arcade mode twice. Okay. How do I unlock Gunjack? Be arcade mode. Now those kinds of cheats may be even more useless than the useless cheats, but we haven't even scratched the surface yet. The PS1 had its fair share of cheats that didn't help progression, didn't make things easier, didn't give you anything, and basically did jack shit, but weren't actually useless because of how incredible they were. These, ladies and gentlemen, were what I like to call RIDICULOUS CHEATS. Let's get the most popular of stupid cheats out of the way first, Big Head Mode. This is a classic. Cool Borders 3? Big Head. It's fucking dumb. Spider-Man? Big Head. It's fucking dumb. Medieval 2? Tiny head? Bigger head? Bigger head? BIGGEST HEAD! It's fucking dumb. Tony Hawk? Big head. Oh look, it's also in the HD remake. That's pretty cool. It's fucking Spyro 2? Big head. And another color. And flat. It's fun. And my personal favorite, Tekken 2. You have big head mode, which is cool enough, but then once you've done that, you can go into double big head mode. Oh my god. Something about Tekken 2, though, is that on the back of the box, there was always this one screenshot that mystified me. It's from the game, for sure, but I used to not have a clue what was actually going on in the screenshot. Well, as it turns out, there's actually a cheat for a first-person mode in the game, and that's where the screenshot is actually from. Pretty cool, but kind of cheeky. Unfortunately, with most Tekken 2 cheats, you need to beat arcade mode 100% to access them, but I'm sure you're all curious either way. I've already done that, so what does first person mode look like? Oh Christ, never again! This is damn scary, not to mention hard as a rock. Not only are the controls not changed with the perspective shift, but if you knock your opponent back far enough and they get back up running towards you, get ready for some terrifying shit. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I know, I shouldn't actually swear, it's bad, it's rude, I know, I apologize. And you know how I know that? Because Spider-Man told me. Yeah. If you type in swear words onto the code screen of the first Spider-Man game, this happens. <laughs> what? I'm doing that again. Is that just what he does when you type in a wrong password? No, okay, it isn't. Okay, I'm gonna test it one more time. Amazing. Oh hey, Parappa the Rapper, this is fun. How about we hold the left D-pad button down while playing any song in the game? It makes Parappa repeat the same word that the button is assigned to within the song. And trust me, it's funnier than it sounds. Do you know why we stop the car? Do I, do I, do I, do I, do I, do I check and turn the signals to the left? Check, 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 Oh my, I need to go back to Die Hard Trilogy again. I think this may be my favorite PS1 game to cheat with. Just for a few of the ridiculous cheats at our disposal, we have Skeleton Mode. <laughs> Pretty self-explanatory, honestly. So how about Silly Mode? All this does is make the enemies fire their weapons at you in between their legs, while they bend over. 
Aha. Uh -huh. Fat mode. Everyone's a roly poly pudgy fuck. Floating dead? This basically allows you to send the bodies that you kill up to heaven. How amazing is this? See you later, my dead bodies. Oh, and you can make the plants scream. <laughs> I know that plants are alive and everything, but fuck, this is dark. But hypnotizing at the same time. I can do this all day. Oh, you know, you're right there, man. You're just, you're just gonna leave the game. Okay, have fun. Let me know what you find up there. I need something a little bit more lighthearted now. Um, okay, how about garbled commentary mode on Formula One? That's down a position. Williams, Renault, and the race has been stopped. The red flags are out. Moreno, Mark Blundell. He's hit the tires. That's burger. Hang on. Germany. In fact, racing games seem to have a lot of pretty cool cheats. Driver, for instance, has a cheat that makes your suspension very... Well... Wow. I'm more bouncy, bouncy, man. Not to mention, how about Micro Machines V3? Let's not only make the cars ridiculously bouncy, but let's also double the speed. Oh my twonking little pig, what the hell has my life become? Ah well, having the camera behind your car? That's pretty damn cool. Wipe out three. Infinite hyper thrust? That sounds great. Three, two, one, go! Oh, I'm stuck. I think that was too much for the game to handle. Shat. Without a doubt though, the granddaddy of PS1 racing game cheats is with Colin McRae Rally. Here's a cheat that gives you a turbo jump. Whee! How about turbo mode? This doesn't help me at all, for God's sake, I'm gonna die! How about low gravity mode? Bye bye, Colin McRae. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Am I right? How about micro machine mode? Okay, this is fucking cool, actually. And the voices go all squeaky. <laughs> How about hovercraft mode? Again, this is really fucking cool. It even controls like a hovercraft. It's totally different. It's so cool. But now it's time for my favorite cheat on this game. Jelly car. This is seriously making me peckish for a jelly Colin in a jelly impreza with jelly road directions. Jelly everything. And with that, I'm afraid that is all I have time for you today, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you enjoyed my random marathon of PlayStation cheating throughout the years. I know there are tons of cheats and games I've missed out on, and to be honest, I had to cut a load of stuff out for this video, but you know what, whatever. This video serves as a taste uh, hey, this is jelly. of how awesome PS1 cheats were back in the day. The more you dig through and experiment with these kinds of cheats, the more fun replaying slightly dated or older games can actually be. And, you know, more games nowadays need to have this kind of stuff implemented. Not only does it make you feel good for actually inputting the codes, but some of the stuff like big head mode and fat mode and all that kind of stuff, they are actually charged in some games nowadays. In microtransactions. It's kind of sad, actually. I mean, I had a lot of fun making this video, and I hope you had a lot of fun watching it, and it didn't cost anybody anything. So... I don't know, it makes sense to me. Oh, but I don't want to depress you. On that thought, if it's your birthday today or watching this video, happy frickin' birthday to you. And please remember to stay beautiful. I'm gonna sleep now. I'm fucking exhausted. <laughs> Hello everybody and thanks so much for watching this stupid video on PlayStation Cheats. If you enjoyed it then please show that you did by liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing to my channel because that would mean the absolute world to me. And if you check the description you'll see that I've been partnered with a new company called Appman. They're very cool. You get the app and then through the app you download other apps and complete challenges within other apps to earn credits and then convert the credits into online vouchers for Amazon, PayPal, Steam, Xbox, PlayStation. It's all there and it's awesome. And you'll also find my Games Grabber collection down there which is all the games that are on my shelf, what I'm playing and buying and you can get them all yourself. You can even get the equipment that I use in all of my videos. So it's all in the Games Grabber collection, so please go and have a look down there. You'll also find all my social networks, Tumblr, Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, as always, if it's your birthday today watching this video, happy frickin' birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful.